Okay, hello everybody, welcome. This is the second online introduction of Biomimicry Academy uh, to the Bioinspired Circle Innovation online curriculum um, that you all signed up. And I'd uh, like to give you an, an introduction into uh, the course and then of course into the topic. And uh, the next about one and a half hours will guide you through, um, well, all that builds the foundation to design sustainable products and services and um, this is what we teach in our lesson at Biomimicry Academy and the first part of it is this online curriculum that I'm going to show you today and I'm very happy that we are able to provide this uh, to you for free so um, you can you have signed up and with um, the sign up to this online seminar you also have been invited to our online curriculum to an online platform this is what we're going to do uh, today. I am Fabian Feutlinski. I'm a founder and director of Biomimicry Academy together with Arne Pechstein, who will join us in a minute. And he will give an, an, a lecture on why we need a new way to innovate with biomimicry and bioinspiration at its core. I'd like to, um, yeah, maybe after, or, or maybe we start with even, given, give a short overview about the course. Um, and then I'd like, I'd like to introduce you to Google Classroom so that, you, that you, after this seminar, can jump, just uh, jump right in into learning about the um, innovation methods that we have compiled for you. Most of you probably have already downloaded the um, handout, the small overview, short overview about the Bioinspired Circle Innovation Program. If not, um, you can download it either from our website, um, biomimicryacademy.com, or from the Google Classroom, our uh, online platform that you have been invited to. And uh, you need the, the code to enter this classroom, and this is the IDMRA1, as is shown here in this link. Um, or you use the QR code, and once you enter it, classroom, you can go to practicalities, and then the handout to download um, the handout. It consists some, uh, maybe we'll switch briefly to it, so this is the curriculum. Um, the handout, I mean, um, it consists of um, an overview about what is biomimicry, what is bio-inspired circular innovation. It has some case studies, too, in it, um, and, um, and it has an overview about the curriculum itself, the program. And this is shown here. You find this, um, this graphic also in the handout. Once you download this, and um, we are starting off the Binds by Circle Innovation Education Program, and the full program with on-site sessions uh, here in Berlin plus um, the online curriculum takes um, nine months in total. And if you want to earn the degree of a biomimicry practitioner, which is the first degree in biomimicry that you can earn in Europe, um, then um, you continue with the biomimicry project where you develop your own project. So for now, we start with um, the first module out of five, which um, the Bio-Inspired Circle Innovation Program has. And this first program, the first module is online, completely online, it's for free. It opened 1st of July. So on um, the 1st of July, we had an online seminar already with about 20 participants. Um, and um, the, the online platform is open since then. Um, and I'll introduce you to it. We'll then have on-site um, on modules in uh, September here in Berlin, um, starting with experimenting, getting to know the biomimicry method, not other innovation methods. And then in module three and four, we're gonna apply it. And we'll have that, um, the on-site part of the curriculum, yes, being situated in the, the uh, Natural History Museum in Berlin. And I'm, I'm very happy that we can do that because there we have the opportunity to really um, work with the artifacts, which are that natural artifacts that are present there. We can learn directly from them. And then in module four and five, apply them to our challenges, to challenges that you might bring, or that um, we source from companies so that you really work on business relevant challenges. Everybody learns differently. And um, learning, well, can be one of the the best pleasures and, and the greatest things you can do in life, and, but everybody needs a different way to approach content. 
And this is perfectly summarized in the CULP learning cycle, and we adopted it for our curriculum here. Um, and this learning uh, methodology consists of the, the notion that some people learn through experience and need to connect emotionally to what they do. Others learn through reading and uh, through studying. Um, again, others have to contemplate and take their time for themselves but to think about it. Again, another um, group of people rather do something, they experiment, experiment again, but they do that not alone, but together with people. I'd like to, to envision the Google Classroom as your own mind palace. And this is one of the first assignments when you enter the online curriculum is you should build your own place. And uh, I'd like to call it the garden. It's the place where you um, can take your time to learn. And from this garden, once you've created it, you go into the library and you familiarize with the content. I will show that to you after the lecture. Um, but once you know the content, you can use it in different fashions. So either you can just read it in the library, and number one, you can uh, work together on it in the cafe with others, number two, you can play around with it in the studio, number three, or you can uh, contemplate about it in the forest, number four. Uh, but all of these different approaches end up at the door, the last step in which you can um, assess yourself, so there is no grading, it's just for, uh, you can test yourself if you have learned the content that was provided to you. And um, then you can enter the second module if you signed, if you will have signed up for it. This all is based on the biomimicry uh, framework and um, the biomimicry framework that we use is uh, based on the Biomimicry Institute. Here, this Biomimicry Resource Handbook is a wonderful book provided by Biomimicry 3.8, um, which is not commercially usable. Um, so we can't provide it for you, but you can um, buy it yourself. You can purchase it, for example, on Amazon. And if you use this link, um, you can use the, the affiliation through Biomimicry Academy. Before we now start with the lecture, I'd like to thank two people who are not here today with, with us in the seminar. The one is Professor Regina Rowland. Uh, she actually created the content um, together with Arndt and myself of this whole course. And uh, she's a biomimicry specialist from the biomimicry 3.8. And Paul Hoffman, who, uh, whom you were in contact for sure already um, online. He's our lead of communication and collaboration. And I'm very thankful for the support on, from his side. So with this, now, I would like to hand over and, and welcome Arndt Pechstein, my uh, good friend and uh, co-founder of Biomimicry Academy, who is not with me today, but as I see in a very nice surrounding. Arndt, uh, can you tell us where you are? Yes, I'm actually in Budapest right now, and it looks as if I'm in a forest. I'm not, but this is a green, a live green wall. Uh, so I position myself to have a really nice background. I realize I have a nice audio background as well. I hope everybody can understand me anyways. Is that the case or is it too noisy? I think, I think it's going to be fine. Okay. Uh, Arne, maybe uh, before you start your lecture, you can, um, well, tell us a bit about yourself because you brought biomimicry to Germany and helped um, to create all this content that we are using today. And I'm very happy to be working with you since years. Uh, so maybe you can uh, talk a bit about how the Biomimicry Academy uh, came to life. Right, uh, this is really like something I'm, I've been long looking forward to. And it's a great pleasure to work with you and the team on that because uh, we have brought by Mimicry uh, to Germany in 2012 already. And it's really the endeavor to bring this to a larger audience, to bring this into organizations, because we feel the time is more than right to have such approaches, learning from nature and bringing sustainability and the systems mindset into organization, and into society. And as such, uh, we want to empower people to exactly do this, to learn what is it about, how they can apply it, and how they can bring it into their realm to really make a change in the world. And we have developed it over the years beyond the mere biomimicry methodology, and I'll go deeper into that in the uh, slide stack I'll show in a few minutes, um, because we feel that it really needs to connect it to the needs of people, it needs to be connected to the business requirements, it needs to be connected to societal needs, and that's something we want to teach throughout this entire program. So, I want to say something about the Bioinspired Circular Innovation and the background of it, why and how we can design a future that works. 
And it's really about transforming the status quo. We really have to challenge what we're doing right now. And we need um, not only the mindset, but of course we need the tool set to actually make that happen. Um, we've talked about us a little bit and Fabian, Fabian has introduced himself. Um, he also is a biomedical practitioner and coach and he focuses very much on the bioeconomy and the circular economy. He's also a design thinking coach and he's a project manager. And we both share the passion and the uh, history of being neuroscientists. So that's where we also met uh, several years ago. Um, that is also my background. I'm a neuroscientist. Uh, beyond that, we, of course, uh, teach and uh, practice the biomimicry methodology. We're working on using the standard design, and that's something we bring into this curriculum as well, because this is the only way how we can make change by affecting people and building on people's needs and driving them to change in a systemic way um, and also working towards how can we implement digital technologies for the good? How can we leverage the abundance that is created through information-enabled technologies? So I work a lot with organizations and teams to basically do this. And that is something that goes from in terms of experience and also in terms of methods into the curriculum. So that's what we have just said. We mix neuroscience and what it means to be an intelligent human being and the basically leveraging the entire cognitive potential of human beings, mix that with what we can learn also from complex adaptive, adaptive systems in nature. And we do integrate this then and we have integrated methods into the entire program that allows us to leverage the potential of organizations, change also entire value streams and business models and integrate it into running businesses. So now, before we go into the methods, I just want to highlight a few mega trends that are currently happening. And one is digitalization. When I say digitalization, it's not only about technology because that's what we most often think about digitalization. Of course, there's technologies, but it does something with people, it does something to processes, to structures, to organizations. That's what we also consider. Now, if we look at what is happening right now, and especially with in terms of technology, but also in terms of connectivity between people, we're seeing that this happens along this blue curve. This is exponential. And within the next 30 or 40 years, three quarters of the planet's population will live in cities. And this puts a huge demand on how we structure and plan and build cities. This goes along not only, of course, urbanization, but many of the solutions with uh, like the challenge we have in terms of climate change and the responsibility we have to take toward like designing a future that is livable for our kids as well. Then there's a huge paradigm change in terms of uh, how we see, and especially younger generations, deal with products and ownership. It's moving towards access. It's moving towards a sharing economy so that people deal more responsibly with resources and entire new business model become likely and uh, possible. And then through leveraging abundance, through using information-enabled technologies, we basically move a lot of things from being pricey or not available or just available maybe for elites right now to democratize technologies and access to make it essentially free. And this is a huge paradigm shift and that's something that's a huge potential because it democratizes access to all kinds of things, be it education, be it uh, energy, be it certain technologies, be it data, and therefore leverage the potential of many, many people and millions of people and therefore basically transforming the world much faster than we were capable before. Now, if we look at what is happening right now, and especially with in terms of technology, but also in terms of connectivity between people, we're seeing that this happens along this blue curve. This is exponential. And we are at this accelerating track where we really feel it. At the same time, our mental capacity, our, uh, our heart wiring of our uh, brains is made in a way that we can only think in linear fashion. And there's a growing gap between how we see or think the future will be and how it actually will be. So this gap is growing wider. And we need methods and approaches to deal with this dilemma. And I'll show you how we do this. Because currently we're using 21st century technologies, all of us, but we are mostly still conditioned, I really have to say conditioned, in a way of the 20th century, which are outdated principles and mindsets. And our businesses are running that way. Our societies are mostly running that way. And that's something we need to radically challenge and basically establish new ways of thinking and acting. 
just to give you one example, what you see here is a bee on the left hand side as a representative for insects and just to show you how a very complex design, a very beautiful design and obviously a very sustainable design can be accomplished with essentially four polymer groups. You have one polymer that's called chitin. Chitin is the crunchy shell of all insects. They don't have bones like we have, they have a so-called exoskeleton and that is chitin. The second polymer group that you will find in this insect is proteins. Proteins are there for catalysis, they are for structural, for functional requirements. Uh, they make up most of the organism in terms of functionality but also building structure. And then you have an energy carrier that is glycogen and you have information carriers. These are DNA and RNA. And these groups of polymers make up this complex organism. Now if you look on the right hand side you see smartphone as a representative for many of the products and objects we built. And to build products we use in everyday life, we use more than 300 different kinds of polymer groups. And that is crazy in two senses, because first we produce and uh, synthesize these polymers very often under questionable conditions, where we have a lot of toxic byproducts. And second, if we use these polymers and also other materials, we don't build them into these products in a way that they can be reused. So very often we cannot even disassemble these things so they get thrown away or burned, which is a huge waste of resources. And that goes along with a miscommunication of two concepts. The first being that we always discuss a lot about energy and even saying that we have a crisis in energy, which is totally not true because in terms of energy, availability, there's a huge abundance in terms of sun and solar energy. We're currently using the wrong business models to basically feed our energy demand. But what we do have on that is now growing in terms of communication, but still underrepresented in media, is a material crisis, a resource crisis. Because of this linear uh, way of thinking and this basically um, dead end production mindset, we end up with products that end up on a landfill. Just to give you a number, already today there is up to 30 times more gold in one ton of old mobile phones than in a ton of gold ore where it originally comes from. So this is crazy because in terms of resources, our planet is finite and uh, you cannot get it ever back if you burn it, for instance, and lose it. That is not sustainable. We haven't been sustainable in terms of global living since the mid 80s. And this is something we need to reverse. So tradition is great, but just doing things because we've always done them that way is not something that works. And we have really to radically challenge the status quo and understand what are the values and what are the objectives that we have in order to live in the future that we all want to live in and that we want to inherit. The problem though is that we are caught in a linear mindset and a conveyor belt mentality uh, which comes from the uh, basically past century, even two centuries from the uh, enlightenment period where we almost in a military style conditioned people to learn the same to standardize people and uh, that led also to this linear way of thinking now this is something we want to break this is something we want to re-establish with the biomimicry academy and with the program we teach we want to start with what are the visions and values that are underlying our objectives why want to we do we want to go and where do we want to go in a future that um, is basically aspirational that we desire to be in and this is something that helps us first to shape a direction, but second also to collaborate on this joint vision. The second thing is that um, we need to uh, embrace the concept that this only can happen if we fully empower us as individuals, if we recognize the full potential of being a human and giving people agency. So basically empower people to drive the future. And then to get to an understanding that it's not only about being like, enlightened and capable yourself, but doing this in a team, doing this together in a collaborative mindset, and then eventually create organizations, create solutions, create societies that are based on these values we defined before and that are future ready. And that is something we want to do with the Biomimicry Academy program. And that enriches the biomimicry process and um, method by like looping it into a functioning system. So, to break it down into four essential elements, it's really about 
the human aspect. So this is the design thinking apart. It's a user-centered approach to make it relevant. What is the relevant problem we're solving that we are finding a solution for? The second is the nature. How can we use biomimicry then to find nature-inspired solutions to make uh, solutions sustainable and to basically have something that is circular. And that leads to the next thing because that's the systems design and the circular economy principles. How do we design systems that are closed loop, that are circular and how do we make it feasible, which then connects to the business aspect. How do we create business logic and business models that leverage potentials of organizations that break the old-fashioned business logic and establish an entire new and still, of course, profitable way of making business in a responsible way to integrate it into running business or create new opportunities for businesses. So that's something we'll teach throughout the program. And as I said earlier, the important part of doing that is to co-create. And that's why we will work in teams and that's why we will work also with partners to create solutions because no expert, no individual, regardless how smart will solve problems of the future alone. And this is nicely depicted and illustrated by this metaphor of uh, contrasting the old 20th century mindset of the intelligence quotient, where we tried to measure with standardized tests the intelligence of individuals, and we segregated people by numbers, moving to something that Peter Spiegel nicely coined WeQ, the collective intelligence. This is something that is currently under the surface, and that's something we want to leverage also throughout our program to get to this cloud intelligence, to this group intelligence, where we collectively use and leverage the diversity of the people. And this is something we do with design thinking. Many of you, some of you may be familiar with that uh, method and with this approach. It's really about starting from the human perspective. What are the human needs? What are the desired aspects of a problem? And only then do we jump in technology and business. And we do this not directly by looking what technology can we use to solve it, but really by taking this inspiration from nature. How do we get to entire new understanding of solutions and strategies by looking into how has nature done that in the last millions and billions of years? So what we try to do in our program and also through it biomimicry is to use biomimicry not only as an inspiration source, but also as a gold standard for sustainable design. And um, this is exactly what leads us to this new mindset in this 21st century, because with this kind of evolutionary approach, with this kind of established strategies, we have entire new approaches together with them technological achievements that we can pair with the solutions we get from biomimicry to be future ready in the 21st century. And looking into these kind of different approaches, we can get entirely new answers to the same questions that we could only solve with the established uh, methods before looking through the technology lens. It's not easy to look at uh, like human design from a natural perspective because some things you cannot ask, how does nature build a car? How does nature build certain like a, a light bulb? Because it doesn't, but it does produce energy or it does produce light or it does mobilize things. So it always works through the functional lens. So we'll always ask, what is the design gonna do? which is a very relevant question also in design because only then you can come up with new solutions. And then we look into how does nature do it. We use various tools and approaches to accomplish that. Now to give you a glimpse at like some of the solutions that are out there and how different stages of looking in nature can lead to entirely different solutions, I give you three categories here. The first is you can inspire a form or material by nature. You can inspire a process, which could be assembly or a chemical process by nature, or it could be an entire system that you emulate based on nature. It becomes more and more complex from left to right, but also the impact is uh, usually higher moving from left to right. Let me give you a few examples for each of them. We start with form. And the first one I want to show you is the humpback whale. If you look at the leading edge of the front flippers, it's not straight which we would build on a wind turbine or an air wing, uh, airplane wing. And scientists put this like a model of this uh, flipper into the wind channel. And they figured out that they don't avoid turbulences, but they rather use turbulences to increase uh, basically the efficiency of that blade, which it is in water, this flipper, and it reduces the drag for this animal. If we abstract this principle from water to air and put this onto wind turbines or industrial fans, we can use 
less material because we can make the blades shorter and they run at higher efficiencies and a lower wind speed. So there's huge savings in both energy and material just by changing the design in a very counterintuitive fashion because no engineer would have come up with this idea to introduce turbulences to improve the flow state of the swing. A second example, uh, looking into the process now, is um, how we can change the materials through using biological processes. And one example is the building and construction industry, where we use mostly cement. And uh, this is a very uh, significant substance because per ton cement, because it's a very energy intense process to make it, we produce one ton of carbon dioxide. And if we could reduce this, this, or even not even produce carbon dioxide by producing salmon, this would be a radical game changer. And in fact, there is a biological process called biomineralization that does exactly the opposite. It produces cement, which is calcium carbonate, by absorption, by binding atmospheric carbon dioxide. And the result is, for instance, uh, coral reefs. They are calcium carbonate, and that is the, not only the reduction in carbon dioxide emission, but it's the inversion of the equation by binding carbon dioxide. So this is really this is something we need to get into our heads also. It's not only becoming less bad, but really not only having a, a less bad negative footprint, but a good footprint. And there are companies who do that. They have they come up with a process where they can bind and capture gases, atmospheric carbon dioxide, and make calcium carbonate cement out of it. And they not only reduce the carbon dioxide emission, but they bind, effectively bind carbon dioxide, therefore reducing the total amount of carbon dioxide. And this is a big game change. Now finally, uh, the system um, uh, is something which has the largest impact. It's the most difficult to do. And imagine if you could disrupt an entire industry. And this is something that uh, comes up more and more often in organizations. You can also use the uh, principles and functional um, uh, solutions from biology in organizations, how we design organizations, how we design value streams in a different way. And um, we do this by using various tools. And I will just, again, give a quick glimpse into some of these tools without going into detail because all this will be covered in the modules, but just to give you an overview. The first thing that is very important and that also discriminates biomimicry from other bio-inspired practices it is that it has three essential elements that are driving our actions and our mindset. The first is the ethos. The ethos is the underlying philosophy of really, really having a good design intention, of being sustainable, of giving back, not just extracting knowledge and strategies for innovation from biology, but really uh, taking care of our planet and uh, recognizing that we are part of nature and that we want to maintain that planet and not just exploit it. The second aspect is the reconnection part that has a spiritual component almost because it's something that we um, basically acknowledge that we cannot just from a textbook or from a paper come up with a cool solution but sometimes it's really good to go out to really feel nature and to get into this ideation space of nature and really reconnect to the natural world. And that's a very crucial element as well because only the combination of our intention, of the experience, and then of the knowledge and the abstraction of the knowledge, which is, which is then the emulate part, can lead to a systemic and sustainable design. And that, these are the underlying principles and elements of biomimicry. Then we have abstracted design principles. These are guiding principles, the so-called life's principles, and they are valid for all life on our planet. They're not specific to just one organism, but they are things that we find throughout all of the systems. That's something which is adaptation to change, which is more and more important in our changing world. It's about being locally attuned and responsive, using uh, resources that are local and uh, that are working, using life-friendly chemistry. Uh, also be resource efficient, using mechanisms of modularity, for instance, using uh, resilient strategies to build products that last, that can basically not break down by breaking down one part. Also to recognize and acknowledge that it's not all about growth, but that it's about integration of development and growth, and that a zero growth is also sometimes something that is good and uh, uh, working, and it doesn't have to be this infinite growth. And it's about evolution and learning strategies that we basically, in order to survive, have to constantly Involve, take up information and iterate our designs and our organizational setup. 
Um, and then there's, a, of course, a process that is based on the design process. It is, goes very well hand in hand with the design thinking process and it essentially also builds on the same phases of understanding first, then going into ideation phase, prototyping and iterating, evaluating by hypotheses that you test and um, basically validate or invalidate. And again, we will lead you through this process. We will teach you also tools where you can identify biological uh, models and how you can come up with inspiration sources, how you abstract this biological knowledge in order to bring it into the human solution space and so on. These are the tools we will be using and will be teaching and they build on these uh, Biomicry 3.8 uh, tool set that Fabian was mentioning already and that you also find in the resource handbook. And that's something that we go beyond and integrate um, neatly into a wider set of tools and methods that link it to relevancy, which is to the design thinking and agile approaches and the business modeling at the later stage. And it allows us to think in entire systems uh, that I mentioned earlier to not only improve existing solutions, but really come up with sometimes disruptive and radically new solutions in order to do good and not just less bad. We will also teach you and tell you about certain projects we've been working in. For instance, that one here, again, that I don't go into detail right now, but we've been working on mobility solutions in the city context. How does urban mobility look like in the, uh, in the 21st century, which we have done together with Audi, uh, where we have designed a modular design, a design that can scale according to needs, which is multifunctional. We can couple people and cargo transport, something where we bring back the human component, which is the social aspect into the design and which integrates the latest technologies, be it cloud-based solutions, be it autonomous driving, but also destination control algorithms into a solution that is way more flexible and way more capable and also more sustainable than anything we have currently. It is all about, and that's why we're saying thinking in systems, transforming spaces, transforming organizations, transforming society from something as an example from this mobility project we've been working on into something that may look like this, a more livable area, a livable space, which reclaims urban space to people, to nature, to make the world a better place and a more sustainable place, which we are proud to inherit to our kids because this is really what is our desired intention. And with that, and this is something that is not mutually exclusive, but that basically reinforces each other. If done right, you can build exponential organizations by leveraging abundance through technologies, technologies that we're having that are growing exponentially by reaching more and more people, and democratizing access to various things, be it information, be it education and knowledge, be it energy, be it all these things and moving costs down and down until we're basically at zero marginal cost. How can we all integrate these things with an understanding of how systems work, of an understanding of how novel solutions are inspired by nature. If we bring all that together, we're definitely capable to bring about a better future much faster than we have been capable, like even 20 years ago. And that's something we're so passionate about. How can we design solutions and design organizations and design businesses that are purpose-driven, that are really disruptive, and that leverage this abundance that is there and that we can tap now through new technologies and become really 10x better in what we do, 10x faster in doing it because we're enabled by technologies and even be cheaper because we disrupt classical and traditional value streams where so many people are in between and bottlenecks and uh, paywalls in between and basically keep people from having access and having impact to making it accessible and leveraging these abundance through this new approach and technology. So this was basically what I wanted to bring across here as a, in a nutshell. I summarize it again, the Bioinspired Circular Innovation Program has four essential components. It's about the human aspect, the design thinking, the user-centered approach to make it relevant. It's about the nature, the biology, where we use biomimicry to use nature-inspired innovation to make the solution sustainable. It's about systems thinking, where we use circular economy principles and link the biomimicry with the business part by closed loop approaches to make it feasible and eventually bring it into businesses and uh, entire new business logic in order to build organizations that work entirely different in the 21st century. I would like to end with a quote from Steve Jobs who said, like, it, has, it will be really a dramatic shift and an entire new era bringing together technology and biology. We believe so and we want to teach that and we want to empower people to actually change the world by learning this.
this is what we will do. And we are very excited to have you on board and make you the changers of the future. Yeah, thank you so much, Arne. Um, I'm always amazed whenever I hear this talk, I, I learn something new. And um, this is, well, there's also something that you that you realize when you go out in, in, in to nature, isn't it? That's right, that's right. It's so humbling when we're out in nature and I'm, I'm sure everybody connects uh, positive feelings and experiences with nature. And that's something, this power, this transformative power is something we want to leverage. Yeah. So this is also something that our um, learning approach is based on, it's experience-based learning. And um, of course, this is easier on, in, in the on-site modules, but we'll also build it into the, um, the online curriculum. Then we'll, of course, always be, uh, be available online and uh, soon in person. And um, yeah, I thank you very much for attending the seminar. And I hope we stay in touch and uh, yeah, wish you a good evening. Thank you. You too. Looking forward. Thank you so much, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Excited to see you soon. Bye bye. Have a nice evening. Goodbye. Thank Have a nice you. Nice day. Depending okay. on where we are. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>